he has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Can you count, suckers? I say the future! Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, you're probably distracted by that new hit television show, Bill Nye Saves the World. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And if you are not listening to it on Tuesday nights and you try to call in, of course, we'll have to see if we can get the phone lines working. That means you will go to voicemail. I will listen to the voicemail, but that, don't don't call in if you're expecting me to. It's not going to be a live show. It's not. So, so don't do it. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery. People, we want critical thinking skills. We want you to understand the world around you through the process of science. Don't be confining your biases. Question things. Question things. Is it confirming your biases or confining? I don't know. Question things. Anyway, who said that? That was Bill Nye, the actor guy from the show I just mentioned. Bill Nye Saves the World, season one, episode 11. Wow. it's pretty impressive. Uh, a couple announcements before, with the very least, we get, we'll get to emails, maybe, because I don't think we're going to be doing phone calls at the moment. Jeffrey Grupp Challenge is still in effect. If anybody from the globalist community wants to debate the Flat Earth community, and it's big, and it's hungry, and it's looking for people to debate, please get a hold of me at msargent23 at comcast.net, or you can call 720-897-6111, and... Leave me a message, say who you are, why you want to debate, and we'll try to get you in. Also, along those lines, the big money $25,000 Flat Earth Debate Challenge, or just actually it's not even a debate challenge, just prove prove the world's a globe. See if you can do it. Can you prove that the world's a globe? If you can, contact this person. Contact Kathy Dunson, D-U-N-S-O-N, who works with Zen Garcia from Secrets Revealed, who is also on this show. And her email address is P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A-77 at gmail.com. That email again is perilandra77 at gmail.com. And before we get to emails, because I will absolutely get to them, let me look real quick at the peanut gallery. And they, oh yeah, and do some research. Yes, yes, I'm totally going to talk about that completely. Absolutely, I'm going to talk about that. Um, before I get into emails, I wanted to mention also that uh, anyone that's going to debate the flat earth, please do your homework. 
please, if you're a globalist, don't sleepwalk your way into this. We're, we're seeing this more and more now because uh, we're, that, there's so many hangouts that are happening in the Flat Earth community. We're getting globalists that are coming in and just thinking they can knock this thing over. Like, I know it's easier said than done because we've all been there. Uh, even me, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, the flat earth is ridiculous. I'm just going to stomp this thing to the ground. I literally thought I could knock it out in a weekend or less because it's so easy to disprove. It's so easy to debunk. And that is not the case. And it's just fair warning out there, guys, do your homework. If you're going to go up against flat earth, don't come at it with such anger and fury and nothing else but that. And I've got to mention, I, I, I emailed these guys and um, uh, a producer recently contacted me and he said, you know, he goes, you want to hear something because I just did a interview. It was a hostile interview with that uh, was called the DH podcast hub. And I'm not going to tell you what DH stands for, but they were real. I mean, one of them, all three of them were atheists, two men and a woman. And one of them had his master's in mathematics and they were coming at me hard and fast and they weren't budging. Which is fine, again, but they didn't have really anything to back it up with. And, and you know, there was quite a bit of name calling and whiskey drinking from, from their side. And it was, it, you know, I don't mind. You know, I, I, again, I'd rather have that in some cases than get the pats on the back. It's like, oh, yeah, Flyer's doing great. You know, cheerleading, rah, rah, go team. So anyway, this producer mentions to me recently, he goes, he goes you want to hear some real, you know, people that are get really, really upset. Listen to this podcast, and I don't think anybody's listened to this, so you're you're going to get an exclusive right now. And the exclusive is a, a show, a podcast out there. It's a small one called Ruined Heroes. Ruined Heroes. They did a Flat Earth episode. They didn't bring a Flat Earther in. There are three of them, all, th all three guys, and they had one guy – play the flat earther you know he tried to debate from the flat earth side so using only the internet as at his disposal and talking about it from the flat earth side he tried to debate the other two and wow by the time you're like 20 something minutes in it was just brutal the there was one guy and i can't remember his name off the top of my head you could probably look it up on the website but articulate enough guy you can tell he's he's well read and and it's got a heck of a vocabulary but that's all he could do was insult people in multiple flavors. That's all he could do. Yeah, there was, he, he was insulting, uh, insulting, throwing out insults in six different ways, just constantly. Just you know, how, find find finding more and more creative ways to insult the the guy. Remember, this is his friend. This is his co-host. And he's still just losing it, just freaking losing it. And so I got to remind you know globalists that are coming into this. Yelling is not a rebuttal. Um, interrupting isn't a rebuttal. Name calling isn't a rebuttal. So it's actually three things. Uh, name, uh, uh, yelling, name calling, profanity. None of those things are rebuttals. You can use them, of course, but you're not going to get your point across. And just because you can yell louder and over talk whoever's on the other side it doesn't mean you're going to win any arguments. It means you don't have anything. And that's the, the part that kills me. And I've, I've said this on multiple things. You don't even know why you're yelling. That's, that's what kills me. I could tell you, it's like, look, I could bring up all sorts of topics to you, you know, like gay rights, uh, black rights, women's rights, abortion, stem cells, church versus state. Take take your pick. None of these things has the visceral response. I mean, I'm sure it does with some people. I mean, there's people that blow up abortion clinics. We don't go down that road though. Where, but nothing, but with the general population, this gets the most consistent visceral response of all. And you could tell that with this, with this guy's, um, uh, attacks, he was just so angry. He was so angry that it was even on the, he said all the things we've heard on, on different shows, different things I've, that I've, I've done interviews, but where it's just, he's angry that it was even being brought up. It's insulting to his intelligence that it was even brought up on the show. And so I, do I want to be on this show? No, I do not. Hopefully they don't, they don't ask me. Hey, it's a small show. And I do just about any request. I've not turned down anybody. If they ask me, eh, I might do it, but I might tell them to muzzle that guy because he's just a, a freaking wreck. I mean, honestly, you guys thought the DH interview was bad. This one would be way, way, way worse. So anyway, I asked him for the recording. I've got the recording on my machine and uh, I'm not going to put a, make a YouTube video of it unless they actually give me permission. Normally I would. I just put it out there, but because I don't think, think they have a YouTube channel. But if they say no, it's like because I really don't want a copyright strike for something as dumb as this because it's it's not worth it. But if they give me the permission, hey, great, fantastic. 
I'd love to do it. So we're going to read some emails because the phone lines at the moment are, I can't add to group and I'm doing, doing everything right on my side this time. Everything set looks great and, and uh, maybe we'll do it at the first break. So up and for now, I don't think we're going to take phone calls. So I'm not going to give you the number. Okay. Peanut gallery. Everybody good along those lines. Yeah. Everybody cool. Okay. Peanut gallery is awfully quiet for, for this time. I, I, oh wait, I think he's got family listening. So I don't want to, I don't want to uh, ruin that. Okay, so first email is from Brenda. Brenda Marks writes, Mark, why is Antarctica the only edge anyone talks about? What about the edge all around the perimeter of the flat Earth disk, all the points of the compass? Why not go to the edge east or west or in between? Wondering why not? <laughs> Brenda. Uh, good point, Brenda. She, what she's meant is this is something actually I ran into it during the DH or, or there, I've, I've heard other people do it in other things, which is they think that Antarctica is only one part of the compass. They, they don't realize they think that Antarctica is like down. Uh, if you're looking at a clock, Antarctica is in the six o'clock position. And there's, it's like, what about the land in uh, the three, nine and the 12? What, what about those? And it's like, no, no, no. Antarctica is the entire outside edge of the clock. That's all it is. Antarctica is the whole thing. And again, it's one of those, it's easy for me to say, and it's easy for everyone in the flat earth community to understand that. But these are some of the questions I get. People will ask, well, Antarctica, Antarctica is not in every direction, is it? Yeah, it is. Actually, it is in every single direction. And Peanut Gallery says email. Well, I'm sorry. He keeps frowny face email. Well, I, hey, we were doing great for a while. It's okay. So I've got a whole bunch of emails. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I can't, I will not be able to catch up with all my emails. So let's just punch through these for the first, uh, how many more minutes we got? 15 minutes, and then we'll, maybe we'll take calls in the second section. Hopefully. We'll see. We'll try. I let the station know. Next one's from Nicole. Mark, I'm too shy to call in, but I have this question. The firmament, does it only make a dome shape about the earth, or is it under as well? Hmm. I know we don't know what's going on under there, but I want to get your thoughts on it. Nikki from Toronto, Canada. I don't like how they throw that in there. But, and that makes sense because actually there's some towns in Canada that have the same name as us down the States, but Toronto is not one of them. And yeah, it, the firmament, could, could, could there be a barrier below us? Yeah, absolutely there could be. How far down does it extend? We don't know. Uh, several people have mentioned that deep sea diving thing where they went into that cavern and it appeared like it was a lake. At the bottom of the ocean, and they couldn't get through it. They tried to bounce, you know, hit it. And some people say, "Well, the the salt solution it was it was too it was too dense, and so the 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 the, the deep sea diving vessel couldn't couldn't punch through it." But uh, yeah, there there absolutely could be a firmament. Now, is it dome shaped or is it flat? I I don't know. I I I prefer to think that it was flat. Why not? I mean, this is, you know, if we're living on a flat thing, why wouldn't the 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 hard the hard deck also be flat? So I'm gonna go with flat. Not a not a dome shape, but I mean, why not? This one's called the Wall by Clint. Mark, were they not talking about the Arctic Circle here and the two hundred foot ice wall? Maybe you've talked about this already, but I missed it. They were referring to the Arctic Circle, two hundred foot ice wall, and the Antarctic Treaty. Listen here at forty eight seconds into the video clip. It couldn't be more in our face. If you guys want to check out the video clip, it is called. <laughs> You can't handle the truth a few from a few good men <laughs> from the 1992 movie with Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson. Awesome. So, yeah, check that out if you get a chance. All right. Next one is called Would Like to Chat. Hi, Mark. My name's Dave from sunny Scotland. I'm not going to do a Scottish, ac Scottish accent. And I've been keeping up with your videos and radio chats for a while now, along with the likes of Patricia Steer, David Weiss, Jaron, and Antonio Subarets. I have just recently moved to Melbourne, Australia on working holiday visa. I've collected some cool videos and pictures from airplanes that were higher than 35,000 feet. No curve to be seen. I would like to chat with you regarding some issues I have in regard to flat earth, plane, dome, etc. So it would be cool if you could get back to me and have something arranged for Skype or Hangouts. I understand you must be very busy, but I look forward to hearing from you. Kind regards, Dave. 
And yes, Dave, I, I unfortunately am very, very busy, but I will try. I, I swear I will. I will try to see if I can uh, hook up with you down in Melbourne, Australia, because international stuff. I mean, he's probably not going to be calling me using a phone. This one's called Flat Cocktails. Hey, Mark, my partner and I have a rule after cocktails, no cell phone. That's interesting. I wonder if that's because you take bad selfies or risque selfies. I'm not sure. I'm clearly violating that rule now. Oh, nice. Okay. Vodka and 7-Up, in case you were wondering. Yes, I was. And yes, that's a good choice. Vodka and 7-Up is excellent. Especially if it's 7-Up. I'm not knocking Sprite. I'm not knocking Coke products. Uh, but 7-Up is a, is a fine beverage to go with vodka. Anyway, your YouTube channel is one of my faves. I listen to you first, then coast to coast on my commute. Your podcasts get me through my one and a half hour plus drive home. Thank you for all you do. You are a brave soul that I admire immensely. I love all that you do. I'm curious to know how you feel about the latest developments in Antarctica and new and how the news ties into FE. Uh, let me answer that one because this person's got several questions. And his name's Sam, by the way, and he's not a girl. The, yeah, Antarctica, a lot of weird stuff happening where the, a um, uh, lot of celebrities going down there recently. 2016 was a huge year for it. Massive year. Check it out. Start off with Leonardo DiCaprio talking to the Pope, the Pope talking to the Russian Orthodox Pope in Cuba who went down and then Buzz Aldrin went down and John Kerry went down and the Russian fleet went down. All sorts of fun things. Fun things that were happening down there. Uh, I'm also curious to know about the different shades of the moon. Can you please explain for me how and why the moon changes if it is not reflecting the light from the sun? It's because it's self-illuminated. No different than the moon inside a planetarium. It is self-illuminated. It's generating its own thing. So if it wants to generate, again, if you're in a planetarium, what are you looking at when you're looking at a crescent moon or a waxing or waning crescent? What are you looking at? You're looking at the planetarium's projection of the moon same thing with the blood moon same thing with all the stars and same thing with the sun to a lesser degree this one's called i'm sorry i'm sorry hang on i recently told a friend about moonlight temperature as a way to spark them on to flat earth about divulging flat earth and sounding crazy to them i'm planting seeds which i'm hoping will spark their minds anyway I thank you for all you do. I find it ironic that you're on the Truth Frequency Radio because I feel we are in a truth age and the truth is leaking out now. We are in the midst of a truth age and you're slaying it. That's the first time I've heard that one. I'm slaying it. I'll take it. Thank you for doing all that you do. Sam from Orange, California. I've actually been to Orange, California. Nice place. This one's called Free Talk Live. Hey, I did more stuff on Free Talk Live. If it's what you're wanting to hear, here's another excerpt of someone talking about NASA. Cheers. And uh, yeah, that's from Freddie. And but yeah, you guys want to have some fun. If you want to take some practice shots at anyone that's willing to take your call and debate Flat Earth, call into Free Talk Live. Go to YouTube. Just type in Free Talk Live and you'll, you'll see because they do a video simulcast to their radio show. And they put out their phone number right there. So just call them up and, and see how much fun you have. Let's see. This one is called Permission. Hello, Mr. Mark. Mr. Mark, nice. Not a lot of people call me Mr. Mark. My mother has called me Mr. Mark from time to time. Uh, my name is Bashar al-Jude from Syria. Wow, how's he getting emails out from there? And I would love to translate your flat earth clues into Arabic. I just need your permission to do so. Thanks in advance. And I already emailed him back and said, yeah, man, have at it. In fact, I, I think I sent him the um, uh, the transcripts to, to do whatever you want. If you guys want to translate into another language, I've got the transcripts in English and I can sh just shoot them off to you. Just email me, tell me you want the transcripts. The, the transcripts are also on enclosedworld.com. You can just copy and paste them. They're all They're all typed out there. So you can just go to the transcripts page, I believe and just grab them if you want. I mean, you have to cut, copy and paste, but if you want them zipped up, absolutely. And it's not in the peanut gallery. It says, yeah, I saw your Spanish video today. No, it's not the Spanish video. It is that um, it's every, it's, it's all, it's, in fact, it's nine different languages. I, I was looking recently and there's this guy who's posting Russian hangouts like all the time, he's running nonstop Russian hangouts. I don't know who's in there. It sounds like it's just him talking. 
I don't know what, what exactly he's doing, but he's got people that are watching him. There's a there's a certain group of people that are watching him all the time. So I started doing searches. I started just typing in into the web. I started and and YouTube. I started like typing in flat Earth Spanish, flat Earth French, and, or better yet, you know, uh, convert the word flat Earth into your favorite language and then put it into something like YouTube. Uh, or put it into a search engine and see how many hits you get. There's quite a few, and there's a bunch of websites out there that cover it. And so I made a video called uh, 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 Flat Earth is Everywhere. And that's really what the name of this is going to be, this, this show, because it is. It's it's getting around to everywhere at this point. We've, we, we keep forgetting because we, we only deal with English-speaking countries here. So we all know, you know... Like, United States and England and Ireland and Scotland and South Africa and Australia and New Zealand and every other place that, that speaks some version of English. We, we take those for granted. But there's a lot of countries out there that are digging into this. And there's it's huge. So so check out. There's it's a video called Flat Earth is Everywhere. Just I just posted it. And I think I covered, let me see, uh, without looking, I probably should look. Span, oh, geez. You know what? I'm going to open it up real fast. I'm not going to open up the video. I'm just going to open up the raw thing that I made it from. I call it Flat Earth in Many Countries. Languages. So there's Spanish, French, Russian, Korean, Chinese, Italian, German, Hindi, and Arabic. And not necessarily in that order. And I made a video about it. It's, it's, it's kind of fun because it shows you what, what's out there. And there's a lot of people. 254 area code. Uh, I'm not going to try to pick you up. Sorry. You're going to have to wait another five minutes. I want to pick you up after the break. Hopefully if we reboot because I tried the test call and it didn't come in. So sorry, 254. You're going to have to wait for now. But yeah, it's this flat earth is taken off and it's going everywhere. And I know we like to focus on the American mainstream media. Uh, but it's it's fantastic. No Alabama language. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, there's dialects, of course. Well, I mean, like when you're over like technically Scottish is English, but it's it's a thick enough accent that it kind of yeah, it kind of reminds me of you wonder if people in England can understand well, some of our dialects like, you know, southern Texas or Louisiana or like a heavy Boston accent or a heavy New York accent. I mean, we got a lot of dialects in the United States. So. Anyway, it's 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 amazing the amount of country this thing is latched on. It's got legs. It's not going anywhere. Oh, and this this is a message for trolls. Unless you control in ten different languages, pff, I don't even know why you're bothering at this point. Because we're going around the flanks everywhere. We're we're just running through the lines, uh, and it's 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 pretty amazing, pretty humbling, so far to see. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Artist. Dear Mr. Sargent, I'm a big fan of your videos and your great research on the Flat Earth Theory. I'm an artist from the UK, and while listening to your shows, I do a lot of artwork. I've been doing some Flat Earth-inspired pieces. Just thought you may like them. Thanks for your time and great work. Kindest regards, Benjamin Reynolds. And I'm pretty sure I grabbed these, but if I didn't, I'm going to save this one off to the side. And we will... If, if I haven't used them in the slideshow, I absolutely will. If you guys have cool memes and cool pictures that you drew, if they're Flat Earth related, as you know, the, the slideshow just keeps getting bigger and bigger, I will absolutely add them to the slideshow. Three more minutes to the break, roughly. Let's see what else we can do. This was, again, a while ago. Hey, Mark, congrats on your 100th episode of Strange World. One of these times I'm going to call in during the show. Check out today's Bing homepage of astronaut Terry Virts, V-I-R-T-S, I think they did that in response to all the flat earthers that were giving the ISS live feed a hard time. I love it. Take care, Mike in Minnesota. Yeah, absolutely. They've been responding to us since since day one. Don't forget that in the middle of 2015, when there was no other shot of the Earth from space, all of a sudden NASA created the second blue marble shot, which was uh, released in the summer of 2015. Same thing with the Himawara satellite. The one that keep the one that Joe Rogan loves to quote nowadays, where he says, "Oh yeah, the Himawara satellite shows weather morphing. Yeah, but it doesn't show the Earth rotating." And that one also came online in the middle of 2015. Also, the Earth from a million miles away came online in the in the middle of 2015. All in the same line, all because we were complaining that there was no images, and it's it's fantastic. They're they've been responding to us literally since the beginning, and uh, it's it's been fantastic. Uh, let's see if this one's called, uh, surprisingly enough, Flat Earth. Mark, what do you believe the dome is made out of? Uh, take your pick. I don't know. 
but because there's so many options you could go with. You could go with um, some sort of field harmonic, electromagnetic, heavy element, heavy water, some sort of force field. Don't know. Whatever it is, it seems impenetrable. So I guess atomic weapons sure aren't, or whatever our best explosives are sure aren't busting through it. So who knows? Don't know. This is a good time. Yeah, I got time for one more. This one's called No Subject. Hey, Mark, I thought you would enjoy the photos. This is Caleb Merritt from North Texas. I have a request for you to make a short video of your Truman Show analogy. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be a, doing a Truman Show analogy. There's been so, a lot of people that have already kind of covered it because they've covered all, just mainstream media, all the different movies. And the Truman Show is so obvious. I don't even know if you need an analogy. The Truman Show is almost literal with with what's being done there. You got to remember, it's a guy literally trapped in a domed structure. He doesn't know it's a dome. The whole thing's about discovering his world, figuring out that he's living under a dome. Everybody else is in on it, though, which is different. And and really, I dedicate a, a clue, or at least part of a clue, to it. I, I kind of mixed mixed and matched stuff because I really like the Shell Beach reference because it's Shell Beach from the the movie Dark City, I think, was more more relevant, where everybody, nobody knew. The entire city didn't know they were under a dome structure. And the, the big clue was Shell Beach. Do you know how to get to Shell Beach? Everybody remembers, because it's all false memories. Everyone says, oh yeah, the first reaction is always the same. Everyone knows how to get to Shell Beach. Well, how do you get there? They can't answer the question. That's what's really interesting about that. So anyway, we're going to go to break here in a little bit. And hopefully we'll get the phone lines up and running. We'll try. If, if not, not a, not a huge deal. And uh, when we come back, we're, if we can't get the phone lines working, I got emails till doomsday, which may not be that far off. Anyway, see you guys in a bit. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. And hey, you know what? I got the phone lines working. Go figure. So um, while we were doing break and I was just doing some tests in peanut gallery, we, we weren't doing so well. Somebody else called in from what area code are you calling in from? Two five four? Two five four. Where are you calling? Two five four. Where are you? Cisco, Texas. Yeah, right on. What's, uh, what's, what's going on? Hey, you know, if you don't mind me asking... What um what got you into flat Earth? What was what was the big uh uh what was the big emotion you felt when you first got into it? It's it's one of those questions we're gonna start asking more and more people. Well, uh, my husband was watching videos and he was getting into it, and I just heard it in the background, him listening to stuff, and I and was like, thought, well, you, you know, it doesn't matter to my it. salvation, you know. No, sure. I didn't. I still loved him, but I was like, oh, I'm good still, you know. I don't have to believe that. Got and it. then I got to think, well, it kind of seems like a big deal after I've heard some stuff. And then I've been just, you know, diving in. <laughs> right on. Right on. All right. All right. That's cool. So what uh, what's on your mind from Texas? Well, there's a lot of stuff on my mind. Oh, my. Well, but okay. I wanted try, to tell try you. To keep, try to keep it under five minutes. What do you got? Uh, well, one thing you pointed out to me, we've got a map on our wall that, you know, is a flat map on the wall mm -hmm. to represent the globe. And in the uh, thing that tells you all, what is that thing called, that shows the distances and all that, it's got the stamp yeah. of the company that makes the map. Okay. And it's got a flat plane 
with a dome over it. And that's the logo of the map. <laughs> nice. Do you, I don't suppose you you remember the name of the map company, do you? Um, I'm going to look at it right now. Well, it's called the Visual Voyage. <laughs> the Villa, Visual Voyage. That is the company, I guess, that right printed the map. All right. Well, and well, I just well, was like, that's pretty cool. Well, people look into it. That's honest. Uh, that's awesome. That's great. And I, I meant to, you know, go and Google whatever maps, just flat map companies and look at their logos. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's done that. No, I don't think anybody has. So to see well, what their logos look like. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's good stuff. What else you got? Oh man. What do you think about these cell towers? I know that's a little off. The self t- the cell thing. towers? Well, I talked to a cell tower guy. And I think he called in actually and said that when they were doing triangulations, that every time that they said they were they were using satellites to triangulate, they were just triangulating with other towers. And the the seniors were telling the rookies that that's just how you do it. You, even though it says satellite in the software, they're just all they're doing is linking up with other towers, which makes sense. So right, I and, agree. And so why are they using so much heavy copper? a wire going up these towers when they can send that signal out with just such a little amount. I don't know. I don't know. But again, you know, it's it's interesting because we get that excuse used by globalists all the time, which is what my cell phone proves the you know, the, the globe. It's like, no, it doesn't. You know, you're, you're reading backwards three or four degrees. It's like, well, because I have a cell phone, my cell phone is obviously tied to a satellite somewhere because I've got GPS. And GPS means, yeah. I'm, means I'm tied to a satellite. It's like, no, 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 no. No, GPS is a Department of Defense military system that replaced the old land-based system called LORAN. If you begin, if you believe the United States military, what if they just slapped a different <laughs> sticker on it? And it was, it's always been the LORAN system. All they did was add more hardware to it. Why not? It's not the first time somebody's upsold some junk. I mean, I'm not saying it's junk. It's, it's some good stuff. It works. But it doesn't mean there's satellites flying around in orbit. Right. Well, yeah. and I just saw an article today on uh, GPS, and it was based on, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but some kind of research something. Yeah. It was a WPS. I wish I could remember the guy's video, 84. Yeah. And it basically said it's a flat. It was how they use rockets and stuff. And it's a flattened out, uh, man, I, I should remember this better. But I was like, wow, this is amazing. Okay. Uh, oh, cool. Man, I'm not very good at articulating my Oh, thoughts. please, <laughs> don't, don't even, not, don't start that with me. Look, everybody's, it, in fact, when it comes to me, I won't even use words if I my my little rule is if I don't hear the words in mainstream media like CNN, if I don't hear it used on CNN, I don't use it. So right. because why would I? It's, oh, it's, it's like, look. man, I love the writ on Bill Nye on Fox News. <laughs> that was so great. Oh, he torched him. He lit him up. And why? <laughs> would, why wouldn't they? You know, they they he, I know. he he represents not only the fake fake uh, face of science. But he also represents the left wing, and so Fox was gonna tor- torch him. They were gonna light him up. And that new show that is, is the new show. All the reviews I'm, I'm I'm hearing about it are just horrible. Oh, just just awful. Oh. But anyway. Well, by the way, I've only been into this for about three months, and yeah. I just can't stop. And there uh, was a video Karen did like a thirty minute video. I don't yeah. know her, Karen B. Yeah. It was so beautiful. Oh, there's, her there's, path to the flat earth. There's so many creative people that are in the flat earth community. This thing, I don't even know why the trolls bother. There's so much good energy. I don't either. Yeah. I'm just trying to kill it. Yeah, pff, good luck. <laughs> You're not killing it now. They ain't got a chance. No, no, they don't. It's too. It's too big. You don't even. You can't even hit enough targets. Even the, look, the, what I try to tell people, and I'll let you go with this. Look, if they, if you haven't found a silver bullet by now, because we're coming up on what eighteen, well, a year to eighteen months since this thing really took fire. 
then if you haven't found the silver bullet by now, you haven't found it because we've looked. At, remember, that's what the Flyers community did. We looked under every rock to see if it was there, and it's not. So if you think you can walk in and, and shoot it down, no. No, this werewolf is going to start just ravaging the countryside. Anyway, uh, any shout-outs that you would like to give before I send you off into the night? Just thanks to my husband for waking me up. Right on. You know, and my son, who just took it with the great grain of salt and believed it. Got it. Got it. Because he's right. 18. <laughs> right on. So thank you very much for everything you're doing, and I will be on Patricia's show Wednesday. All right on. Have a good one. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. Bye. All right, 303, I think I tried to pick him up. 303, are you there? I'm here. Do you know you're on the air right now? Yep. Right on. Where are you called? Wait, okay, you know what? Uh, an 845, you're going to have to wait. I, I see it. Don't don't make me hit the, the disconnect button on you. All right, so 303, don't be nervous if it's your first. It's, just, it's not your first time, is it? No. Oh, it's not? Okay. What, uh, what, are, we, what are we talking about tonight? Um, I wanted to ask you about the 24-hour sun in the North Pole and if, if there's a 24-hour sun in the South Pole. Does it, well, the 24-hour sun in the North Pole would absolutely work with the Flat Earth map, no question. I, if, if, you, if you see the, the, any of the animations – in fact, I've got the physical model sitting right here. I mean it works, it works fine. On the South Pole – uh, I I see conflicting reports. Jaron and and Bob from Globusters have done some great videos, and so is Ditrh, where they show a lot of edited footage from the south the South Pole military stations, where it seems like it's showing some sort of of sun that's running you know for a long time, but then there's these weird edits where these big chunks of time that are that are missing. So just you know when you when you think the sun's going to set the eclipse and then it goes back to you know to daylight again it's easy to miss but the shadows give it away so look look into that if you're if you're interested go to jared i've seen those and what do you think uh, i'm not sure if it's possible or not on the flat flat I, earth it, to have a 24 I, hour sun i don't know either i don't I, you, I suppose you could but why if you if if antarctica is more or less off limits then you've got you know uh, uh, just the tiniest fraction of people out there and no roads, no towns, nothing like that, only military and scientists, then, I mean, why, that could be one of the reasons why you don't bring a whole lot of people down there. So, I, I, I don't know. I could go either way on that. It's not, gonna, it's not a deal breaker for me anyway, because even if there was a way to do it, for me, it's just part of the projection system. So, I've got an easy out. For me, since it's an enclosed system, I, I can... You know, I can always lean on that if I have to. It's the infinite plane people, the people that, that don't like domes. They, that's a harder answer for them. They got to they gotta work their brain harder. I don't have to. So, mm -hmm. Anything um, else? I have a yeah, second question, a quickie. Yeah. Um, the movie Knowing, you like movies. Um, oh, Knowing. To... Knowing was a brilliant movie with Nicolas Cage. When, and, and the review is spot on when they said, and it's a spoiler. I'll give you a spoiler since, uh, you, you know, you already seen it. But it, where they said the movie doesn't flinch, meaning they get to the end and you think the earth is going to get destroyed. And you know what? It does. <laughs> nobody. I mean, no, almost nobody lives, which is fantastic. I loved I love the way that movie ended. I was waiting for it. I was going, I, one of those few movies walked out. It's like right on. You know, they didn't they didn't blink. They didn't uh, they didn't pull it. They didn't hold back. So anyway, go ahead. Well, do we have to worry about that on a flat earth with the sun inside? No, the no, of course you don't. No, none of that. None <laughs> of the none of the, the the disasters that they tell you about in which is why. And, you know, they don't because mainstream at least once every 45 days talks about a new asteroid. I was like, oh, yeah, here's an asteroid, a Christmas asteroid, a Halloween asteroid. This big one came within three million miles. And they all see. But if it was really a big deal. OK, first off, they wouldn't tell you. Kind of like the movie in movie 2012. You know, if something was really, really bad going to happen, it was going to be an Earth-like catastrophe, they would never tell you, okay? The fact that they're telling you is just a drumbeat of fear. That's all it is. It's always, always, always ever been. But no, knowing, unfortunately, that takes the, the, the wind of the sails of the movie knowing and Armageddon and Deep Impact – and anything else you can think of that? Uh, well, even a re remote viewer, Ed Danes, was talking about the kill shot quite a long time. Had people believing in that? Yeah, 
Yeah, I, yeah you, you don't think we need to worry about nope, that? Nope, nope, no, 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 there's no, no, in fact, I've even joked, because remember, I used to be into the whole Nibiru thing, and mm -hmm. for me, it's like, look, if Nibiru, I mean, I mean, I, you know, my, my survival gear was, was augmented that year, you know, I made this, like, <laughs> just, just for the heck of it, and then 2012 came, then 2013, 2014, 2015, and by that, it's like, okay, um, Nobody <laughs> predicted, predicted it this far out. So if it does rear its ugly head now, I won't even I won't even give it a second glance. I don't care what sort of fireworks show you see in the sky. I don't care what sort of noises and explosions you hear. I'm looking. I'm going. Look, uh, you could have done this five years ago. So why you pull, you know why are you doing this now? I, but it's amazing to me that people are still carrying the Nibiru torch. It's almost like they had this big love affair with that giant red thing, and you know, and and I get it, the binary star system. I totally get that because I've seen if you watch the um, if you watch the night sky with night vision binoculars, you'll see them. I mean, I do believe in the binary star uh, scenario, even though you're you're still just looking at lights. I I still think you know it's it's a it's a concept that's up there. But anyway, anything else? That's it for me. Well, thanks, Mark. Hey, it was, it was a pleasure. You have a good one. See you. Phone number to call in because it's working. I don't know why it was not working for the peanut gallery. In fact, I should probably read his notes real quick. Uh, 845, you can call in if you want. 502, you can call in if you want. Take a shot. That's first come, first serve most of the time. And terrible movie. The Titanic sunk also. Yes. I knew guys that... Oh, there's 845. Uh, you're on live with Strange World. I know guys that still will not watch the movie Titanic. Because literally, because they say, oh, I know how it ends. It's like, yeah, that's the point. People watch Custer's Last Stand movie, but that's a guy's movie. Titanic, it really, let's, let's, let's face it, it's a chick movie. It always has been. But it was well done, and it made a ton of money. Anyway, 845, I know you're, you know, I know you're there. This is Mark from New York, isn't it? Hello there. Hi, Mark. It's Mark from New York. How you doing? Well, hello, big guy. <laughs> how are you doing <laughs> uh, not too bad not too bad good day not uh it was clear it's beautiful and then it got crappy now but that's all right it's nighttime i'm inside <laughs> and while you were calling candy franklin who i don't really know she uh she she, messaged, know who she, is. she uh, candy it is i don't know it sounds familiar i know it sounds like a like a box of chocolates Candy Franklin. Yeah. The um the she she wrote in and said, I am listening, but I will save airtime for new callers. Oh, that's awfully nice. But you don't uh, have to, you don't have to. I mean, there's people you know, look, people call in, they call in. It's great. I'm sorry that I, I for whatever reason I think the phone lines were probably working in the first segment. And and I didn't know. Oh, and as as you were calling in, I got an email from, if you were listening, Ruined Heroes. So I get nice. to put the, I get to put this sucker up tonight. He goes, hello, Mark. Excellent. Thank you for your interest. I watched some of your videos while researching the – I see. I knew it. I freaking knew it. When I was listening to that episode, I was going, wow, he's like taking stuff straight out of my playbook because he was playing the Flat Earther. I was going, there's some of this stuff was straight out of me. He goes, he goes, I watched some of your videos while researching this episode. We would be willing to let you use our audio. Understand that we still own the rights to the original work. Yes, of course. We would like a web link to our site. In the video notes to drive traffic our way, I would like a link to your video so we can do the same in return. Thank you, Tyler Dones from Ruined Heroes. See, I think he's a closet flat earther. He I might do. be now. He might be. He might be. He might be because he, he After went, doing the research. The problem was is the guy he was going against was so enraged, so enraged. I'm, I'm not talking alcohol fueled rage. I'm just talking just natural. You could tell he was like a pseudo intellectual. He he valued his the education that he had gotten so far. I don't know the extent of his education, but you could tell that what he what Tyler was preaching was complete. It was it reminded me of the coast not to drop names. Reminded me of the coast to coast one where the um, the gentleman called in. He goes, Mark, how old are you? And I told him I go. I think it was like forty six at the time, and he goes. And he was older. He goes. Well, I'm I'm sixty five. And he goes. How dare you? How dare you, young man? Tell me the world isn't what I think it is. Multiply that by about a hundred, and that's what you get with what I'm going to put up tonight from Ruined Heroes. I'm gonna, awesome. It's it's, just, awesome. it's like this will get people ready 
for you want to know what you're up against, you know, you because so that you're not surprised. Sort of like um, they tell you, you know, they when when you go to boot camp, and not that I was in boot camp before the agency, but they tell you before. Yeah, that's different boot camp. Yeah, it's, it's a completely different boot camp. The um, they they tell you, you know, you they they try to shock you. You know, the drill sergeants, they're, they're in your face almost immediately because they want to get you used to the whole adrenaline panic, you know, working under pressure. And that's kind of what this is. This the, you, this guy goes in. Imagine talking. Well, like you, you've heard some of the emails I've read where a family member, they'll say, oh, yeah, I told my father over over the dinner table. And the father just freaking loses it. It's like, it's like I've raised. I've raised an idiot, you know, you know, insert, yeah. insert three or four. I'm experts. so disappointed in you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, six, 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 one, two, you're going to have to wait. All right. So wait, I'm sorry, man. I've been taking up uh, the airwaves. What's, uh, what's up? Oh here? no, please. It, uh, oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. He's got a peanut gallery. Peanut gallery's got a, got a quote for you. Six, one, two. Hang uh, on. He's beating me. Uh, he's beating me. peanut gallery says first, we thought the PC was a calculator. And then we found out how to turn numbers into letters with ASCII. And we thought it was a typewriter. Then we discovered graphics and we thought it was a television. With the World Wide Web, we've realized it's a brochure. <laughs> nice. That's it's from, a, that's, bye, bye, bye. That's from Douglas Adams. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, oh, yeah the, the internet just keeps changing into uh, yeah, different things. So that's good. Yeah. It sells. That's all it does. Yeah, it sells, sells. it's been selling. It's yeah, true. it's been selling since day one. Any uh, anything going on, on your side? You've been doing a lot of hangouts, well, doing stuff. Been doing hangouts. I got to do an interview with a pretty cool flat earther named Mark Sargent that I really enjoyed. <laughs> that was awesome. I, I appreciate it. It was great. I hope some other people will contact me. It was it was a lot of fun. I think really. yeah. I think really. everybody in the flat earth community should do an interview with you where you're asking them. The tough questions. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask the same battery of questions. You should. You should ask the same the battery of questions. If you had to eat Absolutely. one food in your life, what would it be? I mean, these are movie star questions. Let's be honest here. These are the questions yeah. that, that people get asked on Cinemax. You know, when they're right, like, right, we right, got right. Such, such as new movie, Tom Cruise. Tom, what's your favorite milkshake flavor and why? <laughs> yes. Yes. So, I thought it was, it was just uh, different. You know, I wanted to try something different. I, I got good responses. Everybody seemed to enjoy it. Yeah. Thought that it was great. They loved you. They were like, "Wow, this was a, a new angle seeing Mark," and uh, that was what I wanted. That well, was what I wanted. Th- thank you. And I look. I'm just. Well, thank you. What, you're very, very welcome. I am just. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm not. I'm completely normal. Let's face it. I'm eccentric to the nth degree. I have. I've been that way my entire life, and I try to downplay it. But yeah, when I. I'll give you this. And this is this is me showing ego just for a second. You ready? Okay. When, okay. when I watch when I watch that stupid it's just between you and me, okay. Don't tell anybody. Okay. So no. when I when I watch that stupid uh Mexican beer commercial, the most interesting man in the in the world, <laughs> huh? I watch those and, and it's That's like stupid. it gets to the end, I go, whatever. <laughs> Come on. That's great. I, there's, oh, so, there's, there's just stuff that you, I'm, yeah. Sorry, I've I've ah. got weird. My my stories are probably. I, I've had friends tell me that forever. They go, dude, you may not be the most attractive. You may not be the richest. You may not be this, but they said, man, you are interesting. And I go, okay, yeah. I'll, ta- I'll take it. I, I give you that a hundred percent, absolutely. Thanks. And Thanks. and I gotta say. One of the things, and I'll, I'll get get off here quick. I'll, I'll try anyway. Oh no, go ahead. One go ahead. of the things I noticed was that just besides your honesty and the answers, just how you always maintain your composure, who you are since the beginning, and I respect that so much. Well, thanks. You know, because we've had we've had some flip floppers along the way. Granted, they maybe they needed to find their true side, but we've had some a lot of flip floppers, and never once. Never once. Uh, for me, uh, for me, and I'll, I'll end it with this with you, which is the uh, the truth never changes, and that's yeah. always been for me. There's a reason. If you guys haven't figured it out by now, there's a reason why, and we've seen them in, in cop shows forever. Why the cops keep asking the same questions over and over, and that's because right. it's like I've already told you this story eight times. Well, you're going to tell me another eight times. I mean, how many times has that been written into a show? And the reason is, is because mm-hmm. the truth never changes. If you're telling the truth, you're telling lies. Certain things will there'll be slight variations in a lie, 
and mm-hmm. and Absolutely. look, I've done 112 interviews. 100, I've come, come do 113, 114 this weekend interviews. I'm telling the same thing every time. So yeah, yeah. If, if they awesome. ask, I mean, which is again why it was a breath of fresh air to have you do your thing. Yeah. So and I think you're right. I think all, all the uh, flatterers who should contact me and do let me do an interview with them. Yeah, guys, contact Zula One if you want to get if you want to get a fun interview that's not exactly. Hardcore Flat Earth, contact Zula One, and it'll be fun. And people will know more about you. Yes. And, hey, you'll see more legit. And uh, Yes, that's what I think. Exactly. And in no way will I be tied to any sort of agency at that point. Yes. Right. Yes. At least that's I have, a, I have a quote. Yeah. What and is this one's actually This one's actually for you because I never have a quote for you. I just have general things. This one kind of goes towards you also. And I know I, I'm just no homo tonight, but I know I'm just kissing your ass. Okay. Uh a static hero is a public liability. Progress grows out of motion. And I kind of think you represent that in the sense that you keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, you know, and you're not faltering. I mean, you're cranking out these vids like an amazing rate. I just, I can't keep up with them. Thank you. I I, again, to work, have a life. <laughs> I can't keep up. It's not easy. Um, and I'll, I'll okay. And leave you. I'll leave you with this one quote, and then I'll kick oh, you off. Okay. And just so you know, just so you know, that yeah. was Admiral Byrd. Oh, nice. That's good. Uh, yeah. My quote will be uh, Homer Simpson, where they was they were driving <laughs> way. Donut. They were driving driving way too fast, and Marge goes, "Homer, you'll kill us all." And he goes, "Or die trying." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one of the best lines ever. Outstanding. All right, man. You, you have a good one. Yes, you too. Thanks, Mark. Have okay. a good night. Thanks for taking my call. No worries. And uh, keep up the good work. Oh, and to that other gentleman who just called, yeah. Yeah, don't worry about the asteroids and stuff anymore. It's all fake. It's all crap. You don't have to even be afraid. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely mm-hmm. agree. All right. Bye bye. All right. See ya. Okay, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. But of course, you guys already know that, but I'll say it again anyway. 720-897. There's 405. 405 area code. Where are you calling in from? Because you are on live right now with probably millions of people. Um, I'm calling from Colorado. Colorado. I know people in Colorado. I used to live in Colorado. I was there. 612, sorry, she just got you. Hey, um, you've got about a minute, and then we're going to break, so you want to hold through the break as well? Uh, yeah, sure, that's fine. Okay, so that's right. We're still, what, did, what was your initial question? What do you got for me? Um, well, I'm a cartographer. I okay. went to school to make maps for yep. four or five years. Okay. And we were never, we were taught how to use for the curve and everything, but we've never had to apply it on anything. Interesting. So you guys are kind of like the surveyors. Yes. The, the surveyors told me the same thing, the ones that I've spoken to already, which is that they are told – everyone knows about the curvature. But when they're told what they're going to do in their 9-to-5 jobs, they said, you know what? Don't worry about it. Just treat mm-hmm. the world and, – and you guys can look this up. They're called – there's two types of surveyors. There's planar surveyors, P-L-A-N-A-R, P-L-A-N-A-R or E-R. doesn't really matter. Planar, it's plain, you know, like a, like a flat plane. And then uh, geodetic surveyors and planar surveyors literally treat the world like it's absolutely flat. And you're saying the same sort of thing for a cartographer? Yeah. Nice. And also the projections, they're not necessarily a correct one. It all depends on what you're, what type of project you're doing. It depends on what projection you use. So really, there's not really a single correct projection either. Oh, huh. well, there you go. Um, we're gonna we're going to break here in just a minute. Do you, do you have anything else, or did you want to stay through the break? Um, no, that's all. All right. Well, hey, there we go. We're going to break with uh, a remake of Hall and Oates classic. I can't go for that. Thanks for calling. Thanks. You sounded like a DJ just then. Should have been radio. Is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones obviously under heavy, heavy Masonic influence. <laughs> Major Kong. Major Kong. I'm ready to target the ICP complex in Laputa. Oh, it's great to be fine. <laughs> yeah. What about 
Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. And during the break, we had somebody call in, and I've forgotten completely what area code it's from. Let me see. Is that 443? Am I right? 443? Yes, sir. Where, yes, sir. where is Where is that? Uh, well, I'm in Pensacola right now, but 443 is up in Maryland. Wow. That's really weird because another 443 number is calling in at the same time. That is freaky. That is freaky. Strange anyway, world, right? Strange world. <laughs> yeah, right here, strange world. Strange show. What, um, and we'll do shameless plugs and uh, the Flat Earth Convention stuff after this call. I swear it looks like it's going to be a pretty busy night for the rest of the phones, though. What uh, What's on your mind? Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for your show because it really opened my eyes completely. Because just like you said, most people that start out, I started out thinking this was the dumbest thing I've ever heard, and sure enough, the the interview that did it for me was with uh, Sean. Oh, Sean McCrary from the United States Navy Missile yeah. Officer. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I just have a quick question. Do mm-hmm. you uh, still chat with uh, Jonathan a little? Uh, no, we have not spoken. As a matter of fact, Zulu One, uh, the uh, the guy that called in from New York, he did an interview with me where he asked me what you know the the whole thing with Jonathan. No, we haven't spoken since the whole falling out with Orphan Red thing happened. Oh, uh, see, I I didn't I, I didn't know. I apologize. No, 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 no. It's it's okay. I mean, you know, it's gonna eventually somebody's gonna have to talk about it. The short version is that he and I were doing a show. He didn't realize that, like that when we're um when we've got somebody on hold during the breaks, the audience can't hear us, but you can, you can you can right. hear us. We're we're completely linked. And she was on hold. He didn't know it. He started bad mouthing her. She hung up. Wow. It was just bad. I mean, it's it's high school stuff, and that is you're talking about somebody, yeah. and then they yeah. turn the corner. It's like, but the thing was. He didn't apologize. He went on the offensive. It's like I'm. I'm not sorry. I'm glad I said it. It's like, oh, geez, dude. Yeah. Okay. All so, right. I get it. Yeah. I okay. get it. But yeah, I, I just gotta say, first of all, thank you. And the whole gyroscope thing is what did it for me. Uh, that yeah. was that was the biggest like eye opener because I I went out trying to disprove this, and it, the, the thing about it after the fact, now that my eyes are you know quote unquote open is uh how much backlash this gets man it's crazy oh yeah i mean if you mention it i made the mistake of mentioning it to a sibling of mine yeah. and uh you know just the just the hate speech that comes oh out dude, of is... dude you wait because i'm gonna post i am seriously if you've been listening to the show i'm totally gonna post the ruined heroes interview and it's not i didn't even get interviewed what was interesting was and i figured it out the guy, there was a guy that was a co-host that had watched my stuff that played me, that was basically playing the role of me. And right. his co-host came at him with such fury. It was even hard to describe. It was bad. It was really, really bad. And, and that's the thing is, it, that's what made it resonate with so much truth with me is like all the backlash that it gets, especially from mainstream media. You know, anytime they bring it up, it's all oh, these people are oh, know, yeah. wear tinfoil hats and run around with their pants down. But yep. <laughs> it, it's it's just it's it's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. But yeah, I just want to say I'm a first time live listener, first time calling in. Uh, definitely appreciate everything that you do. And uh, you're very well, very welcome. Sorry. <laughs> No, that's awesome. But, uh, I'm glad. I'm. I'm glad. You know. Thank you. I mean, it's people like you that keep me going, and uh, hey. you know, this this journey is not exactly. Look, it's not a cakewalk. So. Oh no, it's not at all. It's not. But I mean, I, I've been a big conspiracy guy, you know, for a while. Yeah. And it's when I heard about this, even I was like, "This is this is insane. This is madness." And the thing that opened my eyes was your interview with Sean. And uh, have you heard from him at all recently? I know he's probably- uh, not not recently, um, but we were talking afterwards. So, I mean, he's, he's like, I, I've still got him on Skype. I think I can punch him up just about any time. He's got his own yeah. life. You know, he, he ended up getting out of the Navy eventually. He wasn't thrown out. And okay. well, uh, that's good. good for him. Good yeah. For him. 
Yeah, he's doing his own thing now, and and I've seen him make a couple videos here and there. And yeah, he opened up. A, well, what he did was he opened up the floodgates of other people because then I got the rest of the military, and then other people like you know right. flight right. flight controllers and, and that, pilots and stuff. So yeah, and like you said, you know, gyroscopes don't lie. You yeah. know, you can't you can't fly to the you know quote below the equator and have the gyroscope say this stay the same no. it just doesn't doesn't no. make sense and that's yeah. and that was the biggest thing and like that and when i tried to open up the argument with a, a sibling of mine uh I, I just sent them the interview and of course you know they didn't watch it and then they were like just watch the live feed of the iss space station i'm like come on man yeah <laughs> you know and i don't know if you saw this but uh i am a football fan i know it's not really Relevant. No, it's all right. I've had, watched some football in my time. What do you got? Well, they had the uh, draft the other day. Of course. And, uh, they quote unquote made a pick from space. <laughs> oh. With the with the astronauts. Oh. I see. A, I didn't you know. Now it. you've ruined my night. Oh. I'm that, sorry. I'm, that I'm is sorry. so I'm painful. Sorry. It's just shameless. A pick and from then, a draft pick from space. A draft pick from space. No. What they claimed. Please. And there, was a, there was a spinning, a spinning football. And it was just. It was oh epic. yeah, I know. And the football. It's where, where they say it costs. <laughs> if you believe it, some like eight to ten thousand. Yeah, it wasn't. Even, it wasn't even tossed. It was just spinning. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I don't know if you talked about this last. Week. Like a lot of the interviews I watched were uh, relatively old interviews to which you know where you're at right now. Yeah. But um. The whole Trump thing where he congratulated the lady on being in space. Oh, for, in space for 666 days? Yeah, yeah. Crazy number, too, right? Yeah. Well, that's just it. I mean, if you wanted to avoid the occult, that's easy. Have her come home one day earlier or one day <laughs> later if you wanted to avoid that. Right. They did everything. They, and, and since they're just telling you the number in the first place, they could make up any number they wanted. Yeah, I know. But no, yeah, I know. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's like they're, just, they're throwing it in your face uh, and then just expecting you to eat it. Yep. It's, it's, it's crazy to me. I agree. It's I agree. absolutely insane. Anyway, and the one other thing, one, the one okay. other thing, I just want one okay. question. Go back. ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. My, my theory on the whole Antarctica thing is how do we have 50 plus countries sign a treaty or whatever to not explore? My theory is. Maybe they have all these countries working together, blocking off the edges. Oh yeah, down with submarines or anything else. So if anyone tries, oh yeah, you know the the Antarctic Defense Force, I believe, is a real thing. I think it's a real, yeah. honest to god, multinational navy because you'd need cooperation. Nobody wants to foot the whole bill for that thing. You need everybody. Right. You, yeah. and, now yeah, you can, they, and you still can't. I'm going to have fifty countries. Working together that are supposedly at ends with each other right now. That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Exactly. It's because there was never a Cold War. You know, we've never, right. you know, Russia is, and I will stay this, stay this, state this till the very end. Russia has been our secret brother, the United States. Secret I brother agree. forever. China, maybe not so much, but everybody's got the same goal in mind. Now, the, by the way, uh, before I let you go, the, 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 any multinational Navy, it's not like they know what they're defending. They're just told to right. defend it. You know, a soldier is a soldier. So, yep. anyway, got to well, let you hey, go. Thank we you got... for your time, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Pleasure. I hope to talk to you. I hope to talk to you. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you uh, will. I'm not going anywhere. So, uh, by the way, uh, my name's Tyler. Hey, Tyler. It was a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Have a good Bye. one. You too. All right. I'll see you. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. And there's 612. 612, you are on live with me. And 443, sorry, you just missed it. I got to take 612 first. I know there's a time delay, so what's uh, what's Man, going on? It, it's like, you know, uh, trying to call you in the past was so easy. I could get through right away, and now... <laughs> You can't even get it. I'm so, <laughs> dude, is this a big surprise? I mean, look how many hangouts there are. At, at one point, I know. At one point, you'd be lucky to find two hangouts a week in for Flat, know, for flat Earth. Now, 
No, I think it's great, Mark. I mean, it, it's like you, you need to throw away the emails and just call it the call-in show. Well, I, I, I don't want to completely ignore it. Look, I've got a, I've got a wall of emails here that's longer than the, higher than the Game of Thrones, and I can't, I got to do something with them. And these are just the ones I'm saving. You know, I've, yeah. anyway, I, so you, you, by the way, you forgot to tell people who you were. This is, this is Wes from Flat Earth News. There you go. <laughs> so what's, uh, what's, what's going on, Wes? You got, you got, Oh man, I was just, uh, I was just, uh, you know that I'm into the Mandela effect and, you know, I've talked to you briefly here and there about it, but oh. I ran into this, uh, I mean, I've been a subscriber to this guy for quite a while. And uh, his uh, username is um, uh, Bluebeard2011. Okay. And I don't know if anybody is into that, but I, uh, he disappeared for like four months out of uh, off of the uh, YouTube. Yeah. Didn't make a video for four months. Yeah. And all of a sudden, three days ago, he pops in. And he started doing videos. He's got three of them up, telling us that he actually figured out what the Mandela effect is because he has been himself literally, he calls it transported from this reality back to his own reality. Because when I first caught this guy, he was talking about that. He woke up one morning and one of his children didn't exist in this reality. Hmm. He had a son and a daughter and I'm listening to it thinking that the guy might be a little wacko, but you could tell in his voice on how upset he was about the issue and uh, how he was trying to cope with it. And that's why he was making so many videos. And it was one after another, if you ever check his um, YouTube out. Huh. But he, here's the thing. He went back to his own reality. And the weird thing is, is that he witnessed it. He witnessed the shift. He was driving home from work. And he came up upon a, a big semi-truck, and he was right behind him, waiting at a stop sign. And then there was a huge bright light, brighter than day. And then when it went away, he heard honking. And he looked in his rearview mirror, and the truck that he was behind is now behind him. Mm. And he was freaking out. He gets home, goes into his son's room, and there's his daughter. His daughter and his son are there. And his daughter just freaked out and ran to him. And, this, and I'm like, what the? I guess in his reality, they call it the raptured. Hmm. Uh, that people are just disappearing left and right. Huh. And anyhow, he was there for like four weeks. Well, you know, or, I mean, four months, I mean. And all of a sudden, he's back. But what he did is he, had, he instructed his children to make videos because the minute he disappeared, they started making videos. Yeah. So now they're they're keeping the logs, and he keeps a journal. So he had both areas now. So it, it was just really freaky the way. I, and I think it's something you might want to take a look at. Okay. It has nothing. To, he is a flat earther, by the way. Okay. So. All right. I'll, I'll check, I'll check out. it out. That's awesome. That's that sounds cool. Yeah, his also, name's it, Blackbird. Blackbeard 2011. I thought, it, I thought it was Bluebeard 2011. Or Bluebeard. I'm sorry. See, Bluebeard. see the the man the man Delta effect was taking was was there. Get it? Yeah, and I don't understand this other guy I've seen out there who calls it the mandolin effect. He even <laughs> called it Nelson. Oh, he said Mel, N Nelson Mandela. He didn't say Mel, Nelson Mandela. He said Mel, Nelson mandolin. Mandolin. I'm right, like, I'm totally... are you out of your mind? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally stealing that. That's great. Yeah, I'm and he even spells it Mandela. So I had to make a comment saying you're pronouncing it wrong. Nice. Okay, cool. All right, I'll let you guys go. All right, man. Hey, you have a good night. You too, Mark. Okay. Bye. All right, so hopefully, well, people are probably going to call it anyway. I'm just typing Flat Earth into YouTube. I'm saying the filter to this week, seeing if anything catches my eye. Whole bunch of fl new Flat Earth hangouts. In fact, there's two happening right now. One's got 240 people in it. 601, area code 601, are you there? Hey, Mark Sargent, how are you? This is Brandon from Mississippi. Hey, is this your first time or not your first time? No, I've called you several times. Right on. You last week we talked about Darren Nesbitt. Oh, um, right, 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 right. Right, Darren Nesbitt, the, the, the video I had to pull down, one of the rare ones. 
Right, I hate that. I hate that. Hopefully, the production company will upload it soon, and you can mirror it. Or yeah, I mean, it's okay. It. I'm just hoping one day I get to meet Darren because I think I think Darren knows what's going on, and he sees a massive opportunity here. You know, yeah, yeah, I love it. His his presentation is amazing. He's got the personality. You know, we talked about his beard. He's got that that crazy. Uh, oh yeah, but not too crazy. From 1800s, yeah, not too crazy. Yeah, I do have an issue with his final theory, though. Mm. You know, if you if you watch his presentation all the way to the end, he's got this whole, you know, when he tries to explain what he thinks it is, and he says the sun just kind of magically appears from one side to the other. Yeah, I do have an issue that he doesn't like the uh, flat map, which we all know isn't perfect. No, it, it isn't. But at the same time, it's the best thing. I like I've always said, until I find something better, I'm going to treat it like the Roman army. The Roman army uses what it uses till it finds something better, and then it. You know, then it lays claim to it. I'm not going to lay claim to the new map, but I will absolutely endorse a, a map that's better than that one. Yeah, I have got a couple of questions about the conference. Will it be streamed live anywhere? Will yes, it, it will be. It will be streamed live. There will be. There's um. There's several options from what I understand. They're going to stream, you know, all the events from what, and so you don't have to go to the conference if you want to watch it from the, the comfiness of your couch. Uh, some people used to call them Davenports, but apparently it's all all couches now. The and so yeah, it it will be streamed. The what? In Mississippi, I don't think I've ever heard it referred to as that. <laughs> so yeah, it will be streamed. No question. You'll get you'll get more information on it as we get closer. Okay, cool. Um, what will the basic setup be like? Will it will it be similar to say what uh, Rob Skeev as I've watched tons of his you know his conferences that he gives? Will that be the basic setup? Yeah, the yeah. Call, it's going to be a, it's going to be a single room setup, meaning you, we're not going to have multiple events overlapping each other, and we're you know we'll you know chairs and tables and presenting thing at the front, and I'm pretty sure a screen and you know be the whole audio visual, very similar to the Rob Skeev stuff. You've already seen, right. and and if it gets big enough, you know, if if let's put it this way, if if we haven't hit critical mass and the world doesn't implode anyway, if we do it next year, then if, you know, you might have different rooms. So it's like okay, then you have to choose between ODD and uh, Trisha Steer, something like that. So well, Trisha's way better looking than ODD. <laughs> Dude, she's better looking than pretty much all of us combined. <laughs> You know, I I started um, listening after I put my kids to bed, and I missed the first part of what you were saying about Orphan Red. Yeah. You weren't saying it was you that was having an issue with her. It was someone else. Oh, it was Jonathan, my, my the co-host that you, was on my first series of Strange World episodes. I think I must have missed those first Nah, episodes. It's, it's all right. I mean, it was – but yeah, it was – It was. in fact, it wasn't even on air. We didn't even – We I went through it. I saw it happen, and yet the show had to go on. And I wasn't going to tell him what had happened on, you know, I just wanted to, I was hoping that she wouldn't necessarily turn it into something, but she had every right to. And so she did. And then it kind of degraded from there. And then he quit the show. So, but I, I had nothing to do with it. That was the tough part for me. It was like, look, I wasn't part of that, that conflict. I was just literally right. in the room. So don't, I, I hate to get dragged into it, but I was. She won't be at the conference, will she? Don't know. Maybe. She's trying to. I, she might do a, a crowdfunding thing to, to get there. She's not part of the original presenter list, but I know people would love to see her, or some people would love be love love to see her if if she showed up. I mean, she's been quite a personality, uh, you know. Because right. that would be a dream panel, her and Patricia. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but the it's she's been. I mean, when it comes to Women in the flat earth, it's kind of like uh, I'm not being sexist when I say this. Every night is ladies' night, meaning the women. Well, absolutely. I, I endorse when you know the, the conspiracy world is still 75 to 80 percent men, and so women that are willing to put themselves out there, hey, you get tons of, of credit from me, and I will, I will back you just for, just for making the effort to get that far. And uh, so yeah, if if um, if Orphan Red shows up, hey. I'm sure uh, I will. Uh, if she allows it, I will take pictures of with her, and and because I don't think I'm enemies with her right now. But anyway, another thing I watched um, your interview with uh, that hostile interview with, you did with D H. Oh, D H. Yeah, that was just recently. It was a couple of days. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
I wanted to come through my computer screen and strangle both of them. I know. I know. I'm I'm dealing with a guy with a master's in mathematics and another guy who's literally taking whiskey shots from minute 10. That's well, that's two people that you couldn't tell anything to anyway. Yeah, I mean they're and they're all and they were all atheists and I felt bad. It was like who and which is why I told him at the end, I'm going I'm going, so all you absolutely believe in the moon missions. Yeah, and, and it's a tough crowd, tough room. So but I had to keep going. There's no I'm not gonna not gonna hang up. I will I will out endure pretty much anybody when it comes to that stuff. So you know, and, and Mark from Mark from New York uh hit on that. Something that's always been impressive. Um at least to me, about you is you handle everything adversity included with such class. Thanks. It you know it makes the rest of us very happy. You know, um, I'm somewhat of an Eric DeBay fan. I don't I don't check his uh, his channel near as often as yours and Jaren's, but he has such an attitude when people um, throw adversity at him or have different ideas. And I'm just I'm really glad with the way that you handle things because it makes the rest of us not look so stark raving mad. <laughs> Well, thank you, but I, I can't take that much credit for it. I, I do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. But at the same time, I can't take that much credit because it. I was the those people. Uh, there is a, um, you know, I I I was the one of those guys that was willing to yell. At, but the thing was, I had there wasn't anyone to yell at back in the day. You know, back when I was doing the flat earth clues, so I had to go through that journey kind of by myself. And by the time I got to the other side, I had a lot of empathy. So I understand people. It's like when somebody wants to yell at me, start calling me names, doing all this stuff. It's like, dude, I get it. I was you. You don't. Under, you don't even know why you're mad. You don't. So you know, let it let it happen. You know, it's like you want to get out of your system. Fine. I mean, I've seen too many people. Look, uh, let's let's face it. Rob Skiba almost was one of them. He has a good demeanor about him too, but he wanted to come at me. When this thing, he oh, thought I was, yeah, I've seen it. I can see that. I can see he, that. He thought I was insane. And now, you know, he's, he's going to be one of the most anticipated people at this conference. So, and if you, if I would have told him that during the initial thing, it's like, dude, in less than two years, you're going to be doing a, you're going to be one of the keynote speakers at a flat earth conference. He would have right. laughed me out of the room. And now we're probably going to be shaking hands and comparing notes. I definitely wish I could be there, but I'm currently working two jobs, and it's impossible. Well, hey, don't don't say impossible. You never know, man. Never know. A lot of things. A lot of time between now and then. Keep it. You no, know, we talked about anger, uh, anger a second ago, and you can get into the absurdity of the belief. But if I walk up to someone who is a professing Christian, and I tell them I don't believe in your God, they'll go, "Oh, that's that's really sad. I, I hate I hate that you believe that." <laughs> and we can have a, a civil discussion. But if I walk up to them and I say, "You know what?" The earth is flat. They'll go, are you effing insane? Are you crazy? <laughs> I know. I know. It's and that's – that's for, them, for people – yeah, go ahead. That, that's how you know. That's how you know it's got a ring of truth in it because nothing – that's the, the – nothing has that sort of conditioning that flat, that flat earth does. No, no topic has that sort of conditioning. And just like what you said, I'm religion, not- that should be a hot button with a lot of people. That's nothing compared to flat earth. Nothing. I know. It's, 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 it's amazing. I have um I've been taking your advice on approaching various family members and I'll say, Man, you wouldn't believe some of the crazy stuff that's going on the internet, this whole flat earth thing and they're all sports fans are like, Yeah, we've heard about Kyrie Irving and yep. I'll say, Well let me ask you something. If you took away NASA, could you prove to me that the earth was, you know, a sphere? I'm gonna go, Well well yeah. And you know, they've got the classic ships disappear over the horizon. I'll sure. Say, well, what why you can't prove that? And I said, I had the craziest discussion with somebody over the internet. Nice. It was a flat earth, and he made an idiot out of me. <laughs> you know, the people said that way, I'll say, look, if you can debunk this, I'd love for you to try, but I've been looking into it. That's been my technique. It's nice. It's good. I like it. I like it. And the, and the ship's going over the horizon is good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll, you can implore people and come at them kind of opposite and go, help me defend the globe. Help me prove it at the globe because I don't believe NASA. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I like it. Uh, we coming up, we got uh, 45 seconds. What else you got? Anything? Uh, Mark, as always, it's, it's great to talk to you. It's really good to hear from you. Keep the faith, brother. I will. Keep it up. You're doing good work. And Thanks. I'll try to call you next week. All righty. Hey, you have a good one and uh, stay flat, okay? Thank you, my friend. All right. See ya. 
Okay, last chance coming up, last segment to call in until next week. And the phone number is 720-897-6111. That phone number is 720-897-6111. And yeah, after this, I'm going to build this show and then I'm going to build the Ruined Heroes episode where I'm just going to do a quick little intro and, you know, let these people know that, well, I don't even know if I have to do an intro. I'm just, I was not on the show. It's not an interview. I'll just, maybe I'll just, I'll just come up with some sort of description for that. Anyway, so guys, try to call in for the last step thing so I don't have to read any more emails because Peanut Gallery said, said you don't have to read emails anymore. But I feel so guilty. I like you. It's kind of friendly. Anyway. listening to the true frequency radio network no hate no hype no 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 fear You can hear me? Yep. We're not on there. <laughs> we are now. Hey, oh. <laughs> it's Mark, it's Mark Sargent. We're back, part four of four. And yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. And we have who is this? Two five four area code. Where are you calling in from? This is good. Texas, I called earlier. Shit, wait, wait, wait. How, how did you get it through twice? I'm going to have to fire the people that are screening the calls. <laughs> I don't stuff. know. What What's up? Why you I have other people. There's so many people that are calling. What I know. I'm sorry. I just, I have to say, you what? know, if we're on a flat plane, yeah. we're all on top of the world. <laughs> oh, you know what? That was worth it. I'm glad you called back. That's a t-shirt. Yeah, right? we are all on top right of the there. world. I am now going to uh, lay claim to all normal and subsidiary rights to that that statement right there. Yeah, put yes. it on a t-shirt, print it out. That's good. So if we're on a flat earth, if we're on a flat plane, we're all on top of the world. That's excellent. That's right. Seriously, somebody remember my, that. Right. My account. husband, he says that every day. He's like, we are all on top of the world. <laughs> Seriously, somebody turn that into a meme. That's awesome. That's great. You could. That's that's great. Thank you for that. You're welcome. All right, I'm sorry. Off. I just had to call in and tell you that because I thought it was great. Good. Now get off. Get off the phone. Go. Get. Off. All right. All right. See ya. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. You gotta hang up, or I'll hang her up. Blink. She's gone. Okay. Last chance to call seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. And I know four four three. Oh, good lord. That is, there he is. Uh, well, he or she. Here we go. Four four three. You have been patient, and you've only tried at least seven times. No, one, two, three, four. Only five times tonight. Are you there? I'm here. <laughs> so, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Maryland. Maryland, awesome. Just like that other guy. It was weird that we. I mean, seriously, I was talking to him, and you were calling. In. I was going, "Wow, two guys from Maryland. That's awesome." Yeah. Um, I really don't have anything. Long time listener, first time live, first time calling in. Cool. What took you so long? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you just been. Oh, listening. I actually, I, I, I can actually tell you, I'm probably one of those. Um, I'm one of the closet people that you like to refer to so often. All right. So you don't want to. <laughs> okay. Now we're back, and I don't know if I'm going to be taking any calls because the last one that tried to call in knocked me off twice. And if I do it again, I'm going to look like an idiot for trying it a third time. So maybe somebody else should try calling in besides that 443 area code. Because every other call, I mean, you guys were listening to the show. Every other call was coming in flawless. But then that other one came in from Maryland. Who knows? Maybe something was piggybacking. The ghost of Richard Hatch strikes again, says Peanut Gallery. Yeah, I know. 
I don't know. I don't, I, you know what? Somebody else call it. I, I want to pick you up 443. I do. But if you knock me off again, I am going to freaking lose it. I need to, I need to talk to somebody else first. Maybe. Because I don't know what, what happened. Sorry. Sorry, man. And, I, and it was like he was a long-time listener, first-time caller. 443, this is a, okay, this is a different one. This, this is the 2087. Let's try this one, okay? I know I'm going to have to do a lot of editing. Nothing's happening there. 443, can you hear me? 443. Nope. Nope. And I think everything is, everything's still looking green from this side. I can't explain it. Peanut Gallery can still hear me, I think. And there's the, yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Something really weird is happening with the phones right now. I'm going to try this one more time. Add 443 area code. Yes. You can hear me. Okay. I can hear you. All right. Well, you know what? I will... We'll we'll try it with the other guy from Maryland, and we'll see if that works. Okay. This is this is the first one I called. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I know, I'm I rec- running out of uh, Pensacola. Wait, you're so, calling from you're calling from Pensacola, but you have but but your phone's from. No, I used oh, a little bit. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, let me. But yeah, all right. Guy, let's. The other guy was still four four three. Was the one yeah, guy. I mean, you guys are within. I mean, you're not the same. You're you're three six two, right. and he's three five two. But, um, uh, so right. I, I was just trying to call to show you that 443 isn't always bad. Okay. Well, well, we'll <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for him this time. And right. I, hopefully, you know, you never know with computers. I, it's hard to say, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a shot. All anyway. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Well, have, have a good one. See ya. The, uh, all right. So while we're waiting, uh, now we got 816. You know what? I might as well pick this one up. Did, did I already talk to 816? I don't remember. Let's try it. 816, you're on live with Strange World. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Mark. Is this your first time you called tonight? No, man. Actually, uh, this is Houston from uh, Kansas City. Uh, I actually called you last week, and I asked you about uh, uh, just the basic cloud formations uh, question. Oh, yeah, 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 about how the clouds aren't diving down and how they just keep going off straight into the distance, and we should see them sinking over the horizon like a big curve. Yeah. Right, right. Um. I had another question for you um, that I, I I really tried searching for the uh, you know the commercial government type of uh, explanation for how the atmosphere you know supposedly holds our atmosphere holds our air and everything in with all the uh, with, yeah. with all that going on and then yet we can uh, we can have a a capsule from you know a lunar mission re-enter orbit no problem you know with just a little bit of friction heat going on on their outer hole and whatnot. Sure. I was just wondering if, um, what all, if anything you knew about the uh, official, you know, explanation for how the atmosphere works and is a solid and uh, permeable at the same time. I haven't heard any good explanation along those lines. That's one of those questions that it's really that where, where science runs into a problem there is that <laughs> they say, well, the atmosphere is still here and we're still breathing so the end, kind of like the ends justify the means. The end result is, well, it's obviously being held down by something. So our explanation, whatever explanation we come up with has to work by gravity. Right. I mean, that's, that's the most common one is gravity. It's gravity's holding it down. It's like, yeah, but what about the power of the vacuum from space? That should be right. ripping it off. Not to mention the centrifugal force, which is trying to spin the atmosphere off. So how you, and you know, the answer is all the same. It's like, you know, they kind of blow it off. Well, it works. So it's right. like, well, yeah, but, I mean, it explains the levels of atmosphere, but it doesn't, it, it, the outer, no. you know, like the layer, the oily layer of the bubble, so to speak, is never, never given any discussion whatsoever. And it's kind of interesting because what you just said there, if it is an atmospheric bubble, then why wouldn't it be a hard bubble? Like what we're right. talking about. Like if it's an enclosed system, again, it works so much better. If it is a terrarium, then it's a pressurized system. And yeah, you can still it's – it's so big, yes, you still have your, your layers of atmosphere. Of course, not that many. But then that, that still doesn't explain how come you can, uh, you can cheat a rocket through it and back into it, but yet it holds everything in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You're absolutely right. The, so, where, where is the bleeding edge of the atmosphere and what are, what are the physics and – involved there 
you know, why again, why exactly. doesn't the vacuum of space just rip it off completely? Why what is holding it down there? And to to that point, why does the you know did the moon again? If you believe it, it's like did the, did the Mars Mars used to have the atmosphere, and so did the moon. And if theirs is gone, what happened to it? Was it ripped off right. eventually, or is it? Uh, it's, uh, don't get me started, man. It's just awful. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much right along uh, with you and uh, some of the other key flat earthers out there with you know the, the whole idea of the the firmament and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to know what your uh, thoughts were on um, – oh, crap. I'm trying to remember what I was thinking about earlier. That's oh, right. Yeah, I mean, do you think that there's an there could be a possibility of, you know, burning us out? I mean, if you think about on a small scale like a snow web, I mean, you, you light a cigarette and snub it out under that thing and, and cap it back off with the uh, – <laughs> The firm, wow. I mean, are we are we slowly going to be just suffocating no, ourselves? No, no, no. I two I, two things. One, I think it's an automated system. So, like for example, the the weird weather that we've been having over the last I don't know five ten years is compensating for what we're doing. Our technology has reached the point to where we can actually mess with the weather, not completely change it, of course, but mess with it to we're where using chemtrails and harp and all that stuff. There you go. There you go. Change it. So no different than um, bringing like a propane lantern into a car, right? Right, right. If the the air conditioning system, because it's based on, you know, a temperature trigger, is going to have to adjust for it eventually. And it's going to create some weird stuff. And again, that's a simple explanation, but I think people get it. And the same thing applies here where, you know, I, I think so. And also, I don't think that you want to wipe us out. You know, it's, right. it's a terrarium. Of course, there's going to be some weird things going on in it. But the the whole point is to keep us alive. And then, you know, for whatever, you know, see what we do under certain situations. Yeah, you want to create stress here and there. But you don't want to – and I don't want to give too many weird examples because it will make it seem surreal. You don't – the human right. civilization – like, for example, the volcano. It's like, well, one super volcano, one were wiped out. I go, yeah, so make sure you never have a super volcano go off. It's like, well, you're, you're saying the, the volcanic system's not organic. And I go, why would it be? You don't want to let a, an accidental super volcano wipe out whatever experiment slash playground slash amusement park ride, whatever you want to call it. You don't want everybody to die because of some random thing. So right. it's it's all controlled. And uh, yeah, there's some, some bad stuff here and there. But I think most of the bad stuff has been compensated for what we're doing. That's just me, though. I know, man. I mean, it's, and that's, that's that's a good point. Um, you know, w- with you, you mentioned, we're you know we're we're getting pretty close to critical mass at this point. Yeah. Um, I think that when you can uh, go on YouTube and you know, just from last week the show, I mean, you, there's thousands of people that are tuning in to this stuff. You know, every yeah. every day. I mean, I, I watched the THA thing, or I w- rather listen to it uh, when you talk to Stephanie and Sean, I believe. Oh yeah. I mean, you just put that out yesterday. So I mean, you guys are you're you're constantly coming out with new stuff. Yeah, I mean, eventually something is going to happen to where you know people aren't just going to dismiss this anymore. I mean, there's so much information that's being uh, put out the, online to where you know it's, the people that I'm are right being, along with all of it. You know, oh yeah, the people that are being drugged into the hangouts now on a on an hourly basis, not even a daily basis. There are so many different things that are happening that I'm just trying to keep a drumbeat going. I mean, it's great, yeah, that I'm I'm doing interviews and I've got I think three more this week, but. It's it's amazing the amount of people that are now it's that are that it's it's taken it's taken root. It's not it is not going oh, away. For sure. The the exposure look it was going to be a time delay anything. I mean when when someone like Shaquille O'Neal I mean granted he backpedaled five days later but in those five days he exposed so many people to it that we're still getting media uh, delays. Oh, and, and people that never would have ever heard of oh. it in, in passing or anything otherwise. You know. No. It's no. almost like some of that stuff might be possibly staged, but you you, you never know. No, that's but, uh, that's just. I just it. want to know what you thought about. I mean, just having its our own conference, uh, you know, this November is just that's that in itself is huge. You know, oh yeah, you know, somebody can, made the. If we can make it to the conference, and I'm not saying that's a guarantee by any stretch, because there's a long time between now and November, it, without something right. weird happening. You know, something something so mind blowing that that society changes as we know it. I mean, that could very well happen between now and then. But if we make it to the conference, then 
if the critical mass hasn't happened by then, it's it, you know, we'll put it over the edge because there will be media that will show up there that and I still think I my prediction is some weird, you know, unexpected guest celebrity will show up at this thing. But I think that the media right. will, sh- will show up because they it, out of morbid curiosity. It's like how right. it's like, wait, this is the first flat earth conference in the United States in, in 500 years. In fact, there's never been one, I don't think, in the United States. You know, because the United States itself is not even two hundred years, you know, two hundred and something years old. Right, right. All that stuff was already, you know, in the system before we even had our inception as a, as a yeah, as a nation. So, so how? You know, I mean, it's it should be amazing though, if it if we can get that far. Yeah, I mean, that, there'd be nothing better for us than to get some some media stuff because then, you know, on on Fox Four TV when uh, Grandma yeah. and Grandpa turn on the news, they're gonna they're gonna get it, you know, oh, yeah. from their mainstream source and then. And then who knows who's a who will open Pandora's box? So speak, oh, you know? that and then if you want to shoot, and this is for any you know low rent producers out there, anyone that wants to get a, do a full blown documentary of the flat Earth, all you have to do is show up with that thing with cameras and and turn them on for two days. That's it. Just right. never shut them off. Run two or three cameras, r- t- film everything, and then edit it when you get back and sign. Have people sign waivers, you know, after the fact if you think you're going to do anything with it. That's how easy it would be to do a documentary on this. Uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be amazing. Everybody I've talked to, I mean, it's you wait before this thing's over. It is going to be, it's going to be a, a big song and dance finale. It's be insane. Yeah, it's going to be Any, awesome. It's a, it's a milestone for sure. Yeah, definitely. Anything else before I uh, send you? No, up? man. I go ahead and take somebody else. Uh, I just wanted to give a little shout out real quick. Uh, yeah, sea Bear's ahead. got her fifth birthday. Uh, she will be the first of our tribe, so to speak, that will be brought up um, with, you know, alternative forms of education. Nice. And, Excellent. Uh, this, and you know, it's, if, if you've got kids out there, the people that are listening, you got to you got to think to yourself, do you want them? Do you want them learning what the, the indoctrinated, you know, elite? Yep. You know, whatever. Do you want them learning something because it's what everybody else knows or do you want your kids knowing the truth? You know, you got to do this. It's a responsibility not just to us to figure out what's going on, but it's to our children as well. Yep. So, uh, good point. Good luck, everybody. All right. All right hey, thanks, man. stay flat. Hey, have a good one. All right. See ya. All right. Can we get in 443 from Maryland? If you're listening, and I know there's a time delay, can we get you in here without you kicking me off for whatever reason? And I don't know if it's because you're in Maryland. Okay. We're going to try it. You do it this time, I am not picking your call up again, and you're cursed, and it's probably DOD. Here we go. 443, are you there with me? I'm here. All right, I am going to stare at my monitor, and if I hear the slightest twitch, (laughs) I'm going to... Seriously, you booted off off the station twice. Not me. I know. You you killed the station. You and I were talking. The station's dead. So... I I don't know why that would happen. You're not ex-military, are you? No. Okay. No, nothing no. like that. Because no. uh, that was actually happening. Special. That was happening to us with uh, Sean McCrary, the uh, United States Navy missile guy. We, uh, oh, we, wow. were, we were monitoring pings from the outside, and the DOD was absolutely pinging the hell out of us when we were uh, when we were trying to do this. 254, you do not get to call in a third time. Oh, <laughs> Lord. I don't care what sort of quote you got. You do not get to call in a third time. And watch it be somebody completely different. Watch it be like some yeah. what some some celebrity. Anyway, what's um what so what what was on your mind? <laughs> what were All we right, talking well, about? It's a long time listener, that, long time listener, first time caller from Maryland. You you're kind of trying to two five four, do not make me hit that red button. I swear <laughs> to God, as my witness, don't do it. Uh, she's still doing it. Anyway, so how um You've been into flat earth for how long? Uh, twenty fifteen. Right on, and you're still yeah. you're still in it. Yeah, um, yeah. It's for me at this point. It's become a, I, for lack of a better way of saying it, just a massive thought kind of thing. Yeah, I have tons of information in my brain, and I just kind of think about it because I look at the whole big scale of things now. Like, how does this play into the whole thing? It just goes on from there for me. Yeah. You know, I'm at the point in my life where I realize it's everything. Everything has been carefully manufactured yeah. to keep people going a certain direction. 
Anyway, that's not what I called for, though. <laughs> okay, what do you got? Because <laughs> you're going to be the last call um, tonight. What do you got? Yeah, okay. So I had a quick question. Um, easy question. Easy question first in the comment. Uh, with these Hangouts, is it just on YouTube, or is there like a specific place people go to kind of listen into these things? Uh, no, it's mostly on YouTube. I mean, I mean, there's a. Okay. There's, let's put it this way: they're called Google Hangouts, and Google bought YouTube, so it's, they they've got a massive monopoly on the whole thing. I don't even know where else you would go, to be honest. It's so it's easy, it's free, and uh, so have have fun with it. Okay, all right. My comment: unfortunately, I have to build, bring up Bill Live Alliance lie. Ugh. But uh, and no, it's okay. That's okay. I don't. But uh, like my thought about, was this. But but my thought was this. Um, he suddenly come back back up out of the war work like out of nowhere. And my thought on it was this: yeah. What if you're there? It's an attempt to try to recapture those of us because my age range. I'm. I can probably make a safe guess that most of the fighter community community is in my age range from yeah. the 28s to about 38. And all of us would have been children yep. when he was popular on TV. So what if it's an attempt to try to recover, in a sense, you're, you're right. the minds of the <laughs> you're, – you're, you're absolutely <laughs> the right. The, of... the demographics, you're absolutely right. It's a, it's a combination of that and the um, – and, and you know me. I, I've never voted in my life. But the left wing is using him in this case to go after the current administration. Where, yeah. uh, you know, it's like, like, look, we need to we need someone to champion our thing against the whole climate change denier, blah, blah, blah. So who are we going to get? Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's a little too highbrow for this. So yep. he, it, Bill Nye's your only guy. And 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 I got to do a quick plug because tomorrow because I'm going to mention this on Patricia's show tomorrow. Uh, you know, I do Patricia's uh, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes on Wednesdays. I will do this with her. But I, I thought of a good analogy for Bill Nye. And it goes something like this because the reason why – why do you pick on Bill Nye so much? And I go, okay, here's why. I like cats, all right? And because Mm -hmm. I like cats, let's say I liked them enough that I became clever and came up with a show on YouTube called Cat-tastic. And then eventually it was picked up by PBS and I ran for like five seasons on Cat-tastic, right? Mm -hmm. Does that mean I get to be called up? to on a panel to discuss advanced veterinary medicine no it does not no but (laughs) not at all not at all i shouldn't even accept it i wouldn't be comfortable going in that room i have nothing i'm not a doctor of veterinary medicine i don't know anything about it but i did have a cool show called cat tastic i don't but i'm just making this up where it gets interesting is is because people see me as the face of cats and some animals then Mm -hmm. What happens is because I'm not a boring veterinarian guy, the veterinarians might have me in the room with them, you know, just doing little fluffy things here and there. The media then yep. looks at me and says, oh, yeah, well, the, the, the audience seems to respond to this guy. We should start inviting him on more and more things. And then it becomes a slippery slope. Next thing you yep. know, I'm discussing, how, you know, the, the most potent worm medicine for cats. And, and all these, you know, forget about the fluffy toys and stuff like that. I'm discussing hard low lined issues when it comes to veterinary medicine. And then that's it. Then, you know, as long as I'm willing to run with it, as long as the checks are there, yep, I you're keep, in there. I keep doing it. And that's where Bill Nye is now. He's he's yep. he's milked this sucker for decades and and yep. he's he's not going to let it go. They're paying him too much money. They're putting him out in front of the camera. He wants to – this is what his legacy he wants it to be. And hopefully Flat Earth will take that legacy and auger it into the ground. Anyway, we've got about 75 seconds. What else do you uh, want to mention since it's your first time? Well, I'll let you go. Uh, Any shout-outs? Not to- uh, no, not really. Uh, unless the people from Maryland who've called happen to know me by chance, that'd be weird. Um, but no, I really got nothing. <laughs> That's all I wanted. Um, yeah, yeah don't, don't. listener. I was going to, huh? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know, thanks for all that you do. Keep up good work. You did a, you were a major piece in waking me up. I was, it was the clues from you and the litmus test, litmus test from Martin Lee. All oh, right, litmus test. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a thinker guy. I, I, I listened to what you all presented, and I was like, huh, awesome, interesting. And then all, then I started looking at all the, the kind of evidences, and I was like, yeah, that makes a hell of a lot more sense than what we've been taught. Nice. And uh, so on from there. All right, man. So, hey, you have a good well, evening. That was it. All right. 
I'll uh, I All right, man, have a good night. don't don't be shy. Call again next next week if you can. I will try to. All right. I'll see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, and that's it. We're going to wrap up the show. Thank you for everybody that called tonight, and thank you for putting up with my, whatever it was, five, six minutes of weird callness. Uh, the emails were great. Thank you, guys. You guys have been very supportive, and the flatter just getting weirder and weirder. We're now into May, and it's just been a fantastic year so far, and we're still ways off from the conference. Thank you to the Peanut Gallery. And again, treat us better you treat yourself. The world will be a better place. And, uh, hey, come back next week. Same flat time, same flat channel. Evie, what is this? What is this? Is that a model of the flat geocentric Earth? <laughs> I had to make a new one. What are you doing?